Hello future people, Jason the Bruce here with Getting Tabled, and today we're going to unbox some Bushido. So, as you can see, today we're unboxing the Bushido Savage Wave Faction Starter Set. Um, these guys are really cool. Um, this is a kind of like gremlin, goblin type faction uh, that you've seen in many other type things. Uh, we initially spoke of all of the faction starter sets in our Getting Tabled Guide, which you can have a look at over here. But, let's have a look. Um, I purchased a second starter set uh, because I mainly want to paint some of these guys. Um, and I don't know, I just, I've been looking at these for a while and trying to resist buying a second faction given that I'm still in the middle of painting all of my Ito. But I gave in to temptation, obviously, as you can tell. You will find a bit of cardboard. <laughs> I couldn't help it. All of the set, all of the cards, which we will go through in a moment. All right. Bases, all very exciting. All right. As you can see, gorgeous detail. But the most important thing I wanted to point out is that it's not just this one that's one piece. All of these minis are one piece minis. Which for those of you that hate building metal minis, you'll be very happy to see. What I might even do is I'll get some paint down on these and highlight them just so we can get a better idea of what they actually look like. Because it's not always super detailed when you're looking at the bare metal. I mean, the... the, the the detail is there, it's more that um, it's not easy to look at. GCT Studios make some really, really gorgeous minis. There's a reason I fell in love with this game. And yes, the rules are a lot of fun, uh, but the rules are not why I started buying Bushido models. It was the gorgeous minis, um, first and foremost. So, this particular guy is not a one piece mini and I suspect that means that this guy won't be either. Most of their starter set stuff is one piece. And appears to be some sort of chain for his weapon. That's the leader, with his wolf head looking thing. I think that's easily the best looking one in the group. Not that the others look bad, but he's just easily the best looking. I don't know how well that's showing up under camera, but that's clearly hide or skin of some kind that's over that shield. Because you can kind of see where it's been stretched. And his weapon. So. Starting off with a card for Weishu. He is the Bakimono Shugenja Herald. 
clearly looks to be more of a ranged fighter than a close combat guy. He gets four dice in ranged, one in close combat. He does get an... Or he also gets a negative uh, from his weapon. So he's practically useless in cl close combat. Camouflage within four inches, which will help him a little bit. Cowardly and tiny. I think you'll find that they're all tiny. So he's got a, an ability here to help other models with their tests that they would be failing otherwise. He can steal other people's key, if I'm reading that correctly. From the yeah, he can steal their key. That's nasty. Uh, key is what you use to get special abilities off. So that's very nasty. Council shield. So that's the shield I was just looking at. He gains an additional X unmarked wound token boxes until the end of the fight phase. Mark wounds on this wound boxes first. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. That's an ability where you can spend X amount. So you're giving yourself temporary hit points. Archer. Better at archery than he is at close combat. I'm sure that surprises everybody, given that he's an archer. Um, otherwise, all fairly standard. Interesting, though. He also has negatives in his weapon. Hmm. He is fairly cheap, though. He's only seven rice. Uh, Beaters is the other way around. Otherwise, almost exactly the same. Oh, hang on. So while he's in cover, enemies cannot target or enter base to base with him. Unless the enemy model is within four inches of the start of its activation. That's a nice ability. So this guy is exactly the same, except that he's based around close combat instead of around range. And he doesn't have a negative on his weapon. Um, and now this is the Bushi. So he's kind of like a little bit of both. He's not quite as good as the other guy. He's got a combo attack instead of having the camouflage. I think the camouflage might be the nicest. One of the nicest abilities I've seen so far. Um, Raider kind of feels like he's a little bit of both. He also has the camouflage, but he also has armor, which will help prevent some damage. And the Spearman, which is the first one we looked at. He has an okay close combat weapon, but the weapon itself is taking one of your dice away again. Um, so yeah, none of these regular guys' attacks are great. The idea with these guys is it's numbers more than anything else. Um, that really cool camouflage ability again. And he gets reach because he has a longer weapon. This is some equipment that you can purchase. If this is attached to a model, it gains a Berserk marker and be becomes fearless until the end of the phase. If they do discard the card, so this model automatically succeeds when taking fear tests and has immune to being frightened. Uh, this is the theme for your Warband Escort. So you gain this ability for any Bokamono that you've got. So it's anybody, anybody that's Bokamono or Ronin Bokamono. Uh, and it excludes animal, animals and cavalry. Just general reminders about how their horde tactics work. Uh, 
So all of their um, key goes on here. That's cool. Here's our main guy. I don't know why the card was sorted separately from the other ones. So this guy's far more effective. He actually gets four dice in his attack. He's actually quite nice. He also gets that cool camouflage ability. Bodyguard. Soul. Pile on. During an enemy's activation, when that model moves into base to base with another Bakamono, this model can move up to its movement statistic in inches to attempt to get into base to base with that enemy model. I oh, see so you're trying to prevent his guys from um, getting swarmed. Try to keep the numbers up because that is the whole thing. Um, he has the same shield ability. This model automatically succeeds in all opposed key and fear tests and cannot gain frightened markers. Red spot mushrooms. Gains impetuous. Which allows it to be fearless. Soul medallion. Um, when the model is killed, add four key tokens to the Bakamono horde that we looked at a minute ago. Throw a rock. The activating Bakamono gains the following ranged weapon until current activation is resolved. Rock. On a successful ranged attack, the target gains a stunned mark. Okay, so you get, yeah, nice way to stun them. So, from there, I will get some primer and some zenithial highlighting down on these guys, and I will be back with you shortly. And here we go, I'm back. So I've been through and I have primed these in black and then Zenithial highlighted them in the same white acrylic ink that I have been showing off for quite some time now. As you can see, like it's just so much easier to see the detail here. This is one of the two that was multiple pieces. So this shield was a, multi was a separate piece and the hand and this arm was a separate piece as well so the connection point is just after that wrap that's around his arm there it's just these miniatures are gorgeous moving on to the next one this is one of our one piece minis again just so much easier to see the detail once you get some paint down on it it just makes things so much easier I kind of want to go, I have the power with this one. I mean, I know that he's holding a spear, but there's just something He-Man about that. That's just, like, so pathetically He-Man. <laughs> it's like, I have the power, but he has no power at all. Like I said, like once you get some paint down on this, and the camera can actually focus properly, it's just so much better. Just... Absolutely gorgeous stuff. And finally, the other multi piece part. So, this here is the separate piece here. Both hands. So, now that we've actually seen all of them, these two multi-part pieces, I want to say a little bit. These models have been designed to be put together very, very well. Um, each of the pieces have a little nub that fits in a very specific spot and makes it very easy to build these. Um, wasn't always the case with Bushido. There is some older models that have the same issues that most metal models have. Um, but 
I haven't seen anything since Risen Sun and even a couple of minis that came out before Risen Sun that hasn't been built this way. Um, they really, really have done a really good job of stepping up their game with this. Uh, there's only a couple of people, I would say, um, make models to the quality of this when it comes to metal. People that have been following us for a while will know that I'm not a huge fan of metal models. Um, just because there's... I understand the nostalgic thing that people have for them. Uh, but to me, I started with plastic and going back to that just didn't really work with me. Um, but I really like it when companies actually put some work in to make it easier for people to actually build their models. Uh, Infinity try to do that. They're not always successful. They do try to do that. Um, Games Workshop don't really but they're also not selling metal very much anymore um but no they these are some of the best metal minis that i've ever built um i will be painting these up at a later stage i have a specific plan for these that will well our patreon guys might be thinking right now oh i bet you i know what he's doing with this because i kind of dropped the hint yesterday uh, but it hasn't arrived yet, so I will leave you with that little tease. Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you're enjoying the content of this channel, please like and subscribe. If you're in a position to do so, please check out patreon.com slash getting tabled. You receive early access to at least 80% of all videos that we put out, and you get access to the video edition of all of our podcasts the day that they're uploaded. If you'd like to check us out on social media, Facebook.com slash getting tabled is the most active. We also have a Discord server. You can email our team at gettingtabled at gmail.com. If you're on either Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at getting tabled. And until next time.